Hi, I'm Amy from Winterwood Studio, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how art has helped me cope with having a chronic illness and the stress and anxiety that go along with that. So grab a cup of coffee and come on in and let's sit down and chat for a little bit. Just wanted to say I think my schedule is going to be doing relaxing time lapses on Wednesday, vloggy things and tips and advice and things like that on Friday, and then maybe every other Sunday a art tutorial. So that's my schedule for right now and we'll see how that goes. So today we're talking about art and how it's helped me cope with having a chronic illness. So art has really helped me deal with chronic illness and stress and anxiety five different ways and I just wanted to share a little bit about what I do and how it helps me and I hope maybe it might help some other person out there in the universe. So, so these are the ways that it's really helped me. So the first way is um, I have a lot of insomnia from some of the medications I'm on but also just because sometimes I have a lot of pain and nausea at night from my Crohn's disease. So I am often up in the middle of the night when it's very dark and cold and a little bit lonely. And one of the ways that art really helps with that for me is that it gives me something to do. I've made my studio as cozy as I can. It's obviously attached to my house, so you'll often find me at two or three in the morning in here in my pajamas working on something until I feel um, well enough or tired enough to try to go back to sleep. So uh, I don't know if you have insomnia or anything like that, but it can be pretty tough to be laying there in bed for an hour or two hours or three hours thinking, boy, I've got to get up soon and I'm not t rested and I'm going to be so tired and it just seems to make everything worse. So art has really helped me because it gives me something to go and do during those lonely hours in the middle of the night and it really helps me get through some some hard painful nights. Um, so the second way that art has helped me has been um, through art journaling which really helps me deal with a lot of my emotions um, and also the stress and anxiety. Um, I really got turned on to art journaling by another YouTuber, and that's the Unexpected Gypsy. I'll drop her link down below. Um, she has a bunch of really wonderful free resources on YouTube, and she also has a Patreon that I absolutely love, and I've been a Patreon of hers on and off as my financial situation allows it for Mm, three years now, I think pretty much since, right since she started, which I think was in mid-2020. <laughs> My fur baby over there is rattling her cage. <laughs> so if you hear any thumping over there, just ignore it. <laughs> She'll stop here in a second. Um, her water bottle clicks against the cage when she drinks, so it, it makes a lot of thumping noise. So maybe I'll put some relaxing music down low in the background so you can't hear her. I'll have to introduce you to her. You know what? I'm gonna go get her. I'll introduce you to her now. <laughs> this is my little fur baby. <laughs> this is Farita. <laughs> she, we actually, when we first got her, they thought she was a boy. So her name was Alfonso when we got her. And we called her, when we realized she was a girl, we started to call her Alfonza. And, <laughs> and then one of my boys said she looked like a little furry burrito. So then we started calling her Furrito, but then she's a girl, so she became Furrita. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we call her Furrita. And uh, I never thought I would own a ferret, but she's actually a very, very wonderful pet. And she's adorable. Look at that cute little face. She's so cute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had never art journaled before, before I found her channel, and it really, really helped. Um, okay, I'm back. Um, uh, oh, yeah, so I was talking about the unexpected gypsy. And I haven't had a chance to use these yet. I got these on um, the recommendation of the unexpected gypsy. Um, they're distressing ink and some little brushes to go with it to make your papers look old. 
it's not formal art, it's just fun. I can cut and paste things and stick stickers in and write my feelings. I really do a combination of journaling and um, like art inside. Sometimes it's more journaling than art. Uh, but sometimes it feels really good to just like cut and paste and stick things in and I like to put photos in sometimes and things like that. Um, and I, it's really relaxing and it helps to just dump all of those emotions out on the page. If I'm really worrying about something, sometimes I'll set a time and I'll say, okay, at eight o'clock tonight, you can write down everything you're worried about and cut and glue and stick some paper and tape and stickers and get it all out and that's your time. So you can't worry about it now because you're saving that to worry about later. And usually after I'm done, like for half an hour or 45 minutes working on that, I feel a whole lot better. Um, so I just started a new one at on January 1st, so this, this one doesn't have a lot in it yet. Um, it's a really, really beautiful journal with handmade paper and leather. If I can find the link to it, uh, I will drop it down below. It's just beautiful. It's one of the most gorgeous journals I've ever owned. Um, and I'll maybe take some footage of my supplies and stick it in here, so. The third way that art helps me is that um, it gets me out in nature and I, I spend a bunch of time in nature already anyway and it just helps me to spend even more. Uh, my art is very heavily influenced by the woods and the snow and the falling leaves and summer and animals and the animals that lived in the live in the forest around me so I spend a lot of time outside enjoying all the nature around me and the the quiet northern woods around me and I like to take reference photos and just walk in the woods and you never know when you'll stumble upon something that will be something you'll you want to include in your art the quietness of the winter snow the soft breezes in summer the sound of birds chirping all around you, the beautiful bright colors in the fall, and even the first growth through the mud and muck and ice in the spring, it's all inspiring. It all finds a place in my heart and then comes back out onto the paper or the canvas. And it is probably my biggest influence in my artwork. The fourth way that art helps me is that it shuts off my brain. So if I'm feeling really anxious or really nervous or worried about something or feeling down and my brain just won't shut up and it just keeps going and going, I know that no matter what, if I go in and start drawing something or working on a painting or um, a pastel drawing that my my brain it just shuts off in fact I can't listen to audiobooks or watch movies or anything like that while I'm working on my art because when I am done working I realize I haven't taken in anything um, I think that's called the flow state um, I do have some other ways to get into it but my most reliable one is art any kind any kind of art anything that I'm really into will shut off the worries and the stress and the anxiety for the length of time that I'm doing it. The fifth and final way that art really helps me is um, it keeps me organized and that would be with my bullet journal. So my bullet journal, I, I've tried just doing like regular lists or planners or whatever and it just didn't feel creative or pretty enough for me. It wasn't something I wanted to come back to every day and see 10 times a day or however often I look at it. Um, but when I started bullet journaling and decorating the pages with stickers and washi tape and um, using pretty glitter gel pens and things like that, um, it suddenly became a lot more fun. And 
it's made me much more organized. I'm a little bit scattered and, and not very organized, so it's very helpful to list down my daily to-do list and um, my goals for the week. And then the thing about having just a blank notebook like this is that I can put whatever I want in there, so I might just have a random page of goals for 2023. Or I might have a monthly content planner for the month ahead, or I might write a list of books to read in the year. It's not just a strict set in stone day by day planner. Um, it's whatever I want to make of it and I can decorate it however I want, want it to be and it is beautiful and something fun to use and pretty to look at. So those are the ways that art has really helped me cope with chronic illness and stress and anxiety. Um, I do have a lot of other non-art related um, ways that I cope with illness and stress and anxiety. I don't know if anybody would be interested in hearing about my day-to-day -day self-care wellness routine or whatever you want to call it. If you would like to hear about it, drop a note in the comments and I could make a video. I don't really know what I'm doing with this channel yet. so. Um, I, like I said at the beginning, I'm thinking it's going to be relaxing time lapses, art tutorials, and then little vloggy things like this. If you would like to see something, or if you'd like me to cover a topic or talk more about something, drop it in the comments below. I guess I really would like to make this channel whatever you guys want it to be and what you're most interested in. So if there's something you'd like to hear about, let me know, and I will see what I can do. Anyway, thanks for being here with me today. Anyway, thanks for being here with me today in my studio. I hope I was able to help someone or inspire someone. Oh, and if it wouldn't be too much trouble, if you could like or subscribe, that would be awesome. Um, obviously, I'm a very new channel. I hardly have any subscribers, so so it would be great if you wanted to like or subscribe and help me make more videos like this one if it helped you. <laughs> All right, have a good day and happy creating.